And just a few hundred kilometers southeast from here, the world's largest automotive supplier, Bosch, is opening a new semiconductor plant in Dresden today. Bosch has invested 1 billion euros in the site, which will focus on the production of microchips for the car industry. Now, the auto sector depends heavily on semiconductors from Asia, but disruptions in the global supply chain during the coronavirus pandemic have led to massive shortages. The plant is Europe's first fully digitized and highly networked semiconductor factory. The German government also invested in the plant. Start of production is slated for July 2021. For physicist Jochen Rinderknecht, quality control is up next. When it comes to chips, it's all about the tiny details. A single chip, no larger than a fingernail, contains several billion transistors. The science behind it is amazing. We can check individual transistors. If we suspect there's a defect, we can find a specific transistor among 5 billion of them, cut it, analyze it closely, and find the cause of the defect. Tens of thousands of silicon wafers packed in boxes are moving through the production sites of Global Foundries, Europe's largest chip producer. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Once ordered, it can take up to three months to produce a chip. Some of the factory machinery costs as much as an aircraft. We see sustained high customer demand. The plant is already fully booked this year and to a large extent next year. We need to invest so we can offer our customers more products and technology. Chips are scarce all over the world. It's a good time to invest. Global Foundries wants to double production at its German site. Nearby, there's an Infineon plant. The company is the global leader in the production of vehicle chips. Here, too, there are plans to expand. In the coming four to five years, Infineon will invest a billion euros to expand this site. The world's largest automotive supplier, Bosch, has also invested heavily, spending a billion euros on a new factory. The region around the city of Dresden has become the hub of Europe's semiconductor industry. Every second European chip is made here. We're the leading European region, but globally we still have a lot to do to stay competitive. But the race is tough, it's not over, and it's a global race. Asia and the U.S. are well ahead in this race. Europe now wants to combine its forces to catch up. And it's not only Bosch investing in this race, but also one of the world's leading chip producers. Uh, joining me now is uh, Christine Eisenschmidt, Managing Director, Vice President of Intel Germany. Good to have you with us. Let's start first of all with a look at the current chip situation. How much longer do you think we will see shortages? Yeah, the global demand for semiconductors today is higher than it has ever been before because we see the ongoing digitalization that is now impacting all areas of our daily lives, whether it's schools, whether it's uh, healthcare, whether it's cars. So the demand for, for powerful chips is unprecedented. So we, we see that the, um, the shortage of the chips will continue and it will take a few years uh, to be resolved. Right. Because building capacity is a long-term game. And, but building capacity, that's also something that Intel is actually getting into or already part of. Intel announced to invest $20 billion in the United States. Bosch, as we've just said, is just opening its semiconductor factory in Germany. When will Intel follow suit here in Europe? Well, uh, Europe is a very, very important region for us and, uh, and an important market. We are already invested in Europe. Uh, we've uh, invested $30 billion roughly in Europe uh, over the last 30 years, 22 billion in a, in a semiconductor manufacturing facility in Ireland, which is state of the art. We are planning now a further expansion to bring seven nanometer uh, to the region, which we are very proud of. In addition to that, we are planning to decide about a new uh, additional site in Europe, uh, and we are completely open to the location at this point in time. Okay. But yes, we are planning to expand 
yeah, and you, invest you, in Europe. You, you, you plan to invest in Europe, but you're open to location and time. That somewhat sounds like this is still quite a while uh, to go in the future. I mean, how much money do you think and how much time is needed uh, for the United States and for Europe to catch up with uh, Asian chip producers, also perhaps with the investment help from Intel? Well, first of all, to build a new site, a new manufacturing facility takes usually uh, about four years at least. Now, due to the current shortage and the situation, we need to move faster and we need to speed up. So we cannot do this alone. So we definitely need the help of uh, the EU, of uh, the local governments, in order to partner with us to make sure that we can address the shortage and we can uh, provide additional capacity as, as soon as possible. So there you're talking Overall, about subsidies, is that? Is, is, when you say you need the help of the EU and partners, we're talking about subsidies? Yes. Exactly. For, for other countries uh, across the globe, um, semiconductor manufacturing is a national priority and we see them investing heavily in, in supporting semiconductor manufacturers in Asia, for example. So in order to, to really achieve our European goals to double the production in, in Europe or over the next uh, 10 years until 2030, we think that a lot of... Um, investment and engagement from government is, is uh, right. relevant and important to partner with us, to partner with the key right. semiconductor manufacturers. Now, for a company and, like uh, Intel, so far we it's just there's one very important question that I need to get out uh, for, for a company like Intel. Uh, do you think that what we see right now is a kind of decoupling from Asia, from the US and the European side? And if so, is that desirable? Well, I think we've seen that we are facing a shortage and right now we have limited flexibility to react to these circumstances. So being prepared to be more flexible and to, to uh, reduce our vulnerabilities and dependencies is definitely a key priority or, or a key goal. So uh, typically it's good to, right. to rely on several pillars, but, but for sure I think uh, Europe needs to become more independent and uh, also combine design and manufacturing in the region if we want to, to retain the flexibility All and right. if Chris we want to come to a more balanced approach. We at Intel, we, right. we believe really in a, in a balanced approach. Christine Eisenschmidt, their Managing Director, Vice President of Intel Germany. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It's a pleasure.